Okay, we are live. Today is uh, 11th of April, April 11, 2016, and it's the second part, part B of the Reiki 3 class. I welcome everybody, and we um, have C8Y is who? That's Katie. Katie. Yeah, Katie, Katie, Katie Gurudan, Jim, Carl, Michelle, Oops. Quintesson. And who is Quintesson? That's Holly. Holly, uh, Sarah, Simon, Simon, uh, St Stan, and me. All right. Um, do we have a do uh, so? For this part, which will not be published, do you have any uh, questions which are not to be, you know, pr pronounced in public? First, I would answer questions if you have any or messages. No, anybody? Yeah, prepare your questions. For, we'll have the question question answer part uh, later. All right, Jim, how about you? Jim already left, I guess. Um, oh, you there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, you mean uh, galactic languages have been a source of a lot of information, especially when they're interpreted. And um, also they can be very spiritual, like especially Elohim or the languages of the spiritual realms. I find them very beautiful and light. Some of the other languages can be more guttural, guttural and more uh, dimensional. But it seems like the spiritual languages are very light and flowing and uh, give you a sense of uh, calm and relaxation and joy and happiness. So yeah, I love the all the different kinds of la languages that are there and they all have their own purpose so it's really great. And if you do speak a galactic language and don't understand it, that's alright. Sometime you will start to get the interpretations in your head. That's part of the the download that eventually when you're ready you'll start to get that interpretation and some people have already started that I know of and they get a few words here and there and they go well I started to hear it but then it went away but just relax into it let it happen when it happens and you'll get it wonderful thank you Jim uh, my question to you was how do you feel about it do you the, uh, if, if you don't channel if you just kind of yourself, do you feel comfortable Chanting in galactic language and using it in uh, oh sure in Reiki yeah that's what so I learned it from you right so it's how how dangerous yeah. you think it would be for other people like if they I don't start think chanting. That the galactic, I don't think that the galactic languages are dangerous mm -hmm. uh, if you feel uneasy when you're doing a, uh, a galactic language then stop it but if you feel comfortable and beautiful and happy then it's, there's nothing wrong. Sometimes you might hit on a language that's not a, a, a high spiritual language or, or might be something of a, a lower uh, level language that's saying something not quite right and you will be able to feel that. You will be able to sense that. So go by your, trust yourself, trust your heart and your mind together. Uh, when you're doing languages, that's what happens: is your heart and your mind sort of combine to to bring this language to alive to life. And if it doesn't feel quite right to your heart or your head or either one, then stop it. So that's the only thing you have to be aware of. Right. Shifting back and forth is important. So you go there, you open the door for spirits to go through, but then. Coming back is important, and like grounding yourself back to the reality. Like when I he I see the person speaking to themselves on the street, you know, usually it's very disturbing until I figure out they they have an invisible headset and they speak on the phone, right? So, so you know, speaking something r random and strange uh, is a, is a sign of insanity, and it is insanity often. So, so if you feel like you're losing your mind, you know, come back, come back, and you know. It, it's it's something you you have to like you know you're you're adult you're responsible. I'm trying to do something first which nobody taught me that so I'm experimenting. It's uh, the first. It's not even on record, right? It's not even for the publishing. I want to go now and ask everyone to to I will initiate you into galactic languages and ask you to pick right right now. 
Yeah. Um, also, uh, no, I think what initiated I, into it. What can it just come to us because that's something we choose in our own way, like yeah. without. I think what he was trying to say is he was trying to pre prevent any negativity. Not that he was going into it as a, a negative thought process, but he was he had seen some negativity, and that's why the questions about if you asking if you're afraid or not. Now, if you're not afraid, then there's all, only positivity. But he was, uh, I think, he was trying to find out if the if the reason why some people didn't go into it is because of negative thoughts. But if if you're starting from a positive way then it'll be good it, it's always good to start in the positive of course all right and I'll let your heart be the guide and it let let it come naturally because it is something that from source it's a gift so it's a gift it do yeah. is that what you're yeah, trying to say yeah I, I thank you all thank you all Michelle and um, Sarah Sarah and um, yeah. Jim so basically when I teach somebody say mountain climbing yeah you can say you just you know you you have to believe it and you can mountain climb or you can say no here are precautions you have to use that tool this way that tool this way or driving you know you know when you drive you can kill someone right still you're driving because it's like you know a technique so I'm teaching a technique I cannot teach you I cannot be I don't want now to bring you in the highest space and and let higher spirits to to go through I teach you the technique how I started and it works for me so I want to share the technique for you and I use it for healing so so uh, basically my, my question to everybody is now how do you feel about it? if it scares you just don't participate in this initiation if it doesn't scare you um, uh, let, let's proceed and do this practice for galactic languages I understand Sarah that you do galactic languages teach, teaching in a different mindset. I respect your mindset. It's not where I am right now. I am right now in the driving seat of the Reiki class. I, it, it's, I think it's okay. It's like 4.3, 4.2 vibration, which I think is good for Reiki class. Uh, and Jim, Jim brings it up. So we'll start 4.2 and then raise to whatever Jim feels comfortable. So let's proceed with that. I will give you another tuning so you feel uh, comfortable with the sound, and then I will continue asking questions. How do you feel about that? And basically, you feel okay about that. That is your agreement to participate in the training, if or whatever your your intention to participate. If you if you don't, you just skip, and you 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 still part of that because you know even if you don't want to participate, that's fine too. Uh, I will do another tuning, and we'll continue the conversation. How about that? You're alive, you're alive, you're alive, you're alive, you're alive, you're alive. I did one research I can share with you. I, I wanted to share with you. Um, so I, there are people who have nice musical how do you say, ear and, and, and the poor musical ear. And I started, so at first I tried on the guitar to imitate any speech or any, like you read the poetry or speech and guitar doesn't work. It's, it's restrictive because there are bars on the guitar. So I found a violin or it's like a big violin, I don't know the name for it, a uh, big violin, and um, on a violin, on a big one, like medium size, um, uh, you can actually play the proper voice, and you can play the, the human speech, and okay, like the, the tone of the human speech, not the letters, but the tone, and you can play um, poetry as well. 
poetry is like little wider, but still it's pretty narrow. The speech goes within really like normal speech goes within one bar of the guitar, which is one one note, one tone. It's up and down within one note, like between re and re. Oh, how do I say in English? D and D, D and E. Like D and E is one tone, half a tone, half a tone. So that's basically the range of normal human speech. If you start intonating, it's usually when you put more emotion there or are upset, like but more emotion, positive or negative. So intonate more. But normal speech is like la 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 la. It's within one one uh, half a tone. So people who are musically deaf, they still are perfectly speaking. They can play this little bit of shifted, and and the music goes. Two, two and a half octaves normally. So it's like one octave is 12 tones, so two and a half octaves is about 12, 12, half, about 28, 28, 29 tones. It's normal musical song. And um, and that's just a different, a different type of range of, of the frequencies. So you don't have to to be musically talented to chant because you can chant within that speaking range, and there everybody is perfect. Especially the Asian languages, the Chinese is is especially precise in that. But but even um, so, so that's the first understanding, and the second understanding is I just found that you know yesterday I was at a concert where like really really good um, Kundalini singers were singing and. And they were perfect. They were like super. Even when they're between the notes, between the tones, they still get it uh, ultimately right. And I can't do that for sure. So my waving back and forth is is me. It's it's on, on, beyond my control. It, whatever happens with my voice, it's not it's not me doing that. So that's where emotion can sneak through, and that's where the ch so the channel and the aliens, the spirits, they go through. Imperfections in in the music, <laughs> imperfections, overtones, undertones, between the tones, um, and there is lots of words for that. So so, don't be afraid of imperfections, but you know realize that you know whoever you are healing, if they have musical uh, their musical um, um, judgment, uh, so th they might judge you. So. What I do, I do. I go shamanic. Shamanic, by definition, is between the tones and cannot be perfect music. Shamanic, traditional Indian ab Aboriginal. I went to spe specifically to when I travel. I go to these museums of um, ancient cultures, and sometimes they have their video recordings of. Indian shamans, African shamans, all, all sorts of shamans, Russian shamans, and and I, I, I listen carefully to what they sing. So they sing between the tones, they sing out of the uh, Western music rules. So so I go shamanic. Wonderful, thank you. How about you give us um, a blessing to practice galactic languages in um, any form, maybe whatever form you feel comfortable. Kilani ha sakatu Ashulukunai asailanai Tikanya kukaini kia so Ashulumi ha Satai asaini kia so Sakana kataka ushulumi ha Si akai oya taya Mie sakalan nikia ushulunuku halan nakai asu haya hashunana akalana unai asu ayana ya yakutayo shatu huraya hutava shanatu shanatu shirana ha. Shirana hala yama, maya hata hata. Hata hata hata. Shalu, shalu, alleluia, shalu, 
Atura. <sighs> now, uh, let's first, I will, so we don't switch back to English, I will first explain what we do. And uh, the order I suggest we'll take as I have you on the screen. And I forgot the names again. Uh, C8Y is, who is C8Y? Katie. Katie. You, Katie. You say it phonetically, so it's Kate. Katie. So oh. C8YKT, <laughs> it's phonetic. Yeah. Yes. All right. Katie. All right. So Katie goes first, Guru Dan second, uh, Carl goes third, Michelle goes fourth, Quinn Holly goes uh, next, Sarah next, Simon next, and Stan is last. So what we will do, uh, so if you go inspired and you are in a higher mood, which you should, but uh, you just let the, the language go through. If you don't, if you feel stuck, you don't hear anything, you feel nothing, uh, I ask you to speak the most random combination of sounds you can come up with, just as random as possible. And the intention there would be healing intention, and let's do the healing intention for the earth. So that would be the healing intention, as random combination of uh, sounds as possible. And then we'll do turns. I will speak, you will speak, I will speak, you will speak, I will speak, you will speak. And, um, and that's about it. So that would be initiation. I will first uh, give you a symbol for initiation. So that would be the symbol for the So we don't chant at the moment. We just speak. And um, do I have anything else to say before that? Um, yeah, to pause is just fine. If you, you don't have to speak continuously. If you pause, breathe and wait for the words to come, and then when they come, whatever comes, repeating is also fine. Stop and repeating any random. If you just, you know, just don't switch back to English <laughs> or any other language, you know. That would be it. So that's, that's initiation into speaking. I permit you, I allow you, I ask you, I invite you to speak a random language. You, most of your life you were prohibited from, to, from speaking random language. Now you are invited. So I will start and that would be, I will have to chant again. And that's, so, so that's the symbol for initiation into, into the languages and chanting. <laughs> Aya hoida jura Aya hoida jura Naya Rainaya jura Rainaya jura So Katie Yakuda Ja Janja Yanaka Katushara Katushara Shatudra Shaturama Huyarutu. So Beke take menekene siya o che Jikuta Jikuta Shutukaya. Enak seke monoteo seo. Sanda, Sanda, Sanda. Chukota, Shantura, Kalaiha, Kalaiha Dum. Shika. Chi. Chi. Chituya. Chi. Chinka semen okoti aya toye Ratuha, the Kana Sharta Aguran Shatu, Gurudan Makiyana Gurudan. 
<laughs> your silence, please unmute yourself. Gurudan Yatuna Harshaya. Yes. Gurudan. What? Yeah, Gurudan Yakuta Shah Yeah, I'm not getting anything, Max. Oh, no, no. I ask, thank you. I oh. ask you just to come up with any random sounds whatsoever. If you want to keep silent until they come out, keep silent. But just get some random. Start from any word and mess it up. You don't have to listen to anything from the universe. Just random. Produce random sounds from your own imagination. I'm not even getting that today, Max. I'm not. I'm not inclined that direction right now. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank All you. Right, thanks. Um, Carl. Yakutasha. Carl. Yantira kalula ya rujada ka yaka yaka. Ah, Uha, Max, Muha, Goshen U si maka janeto so ono. So ona, Yanoka, Ija de Godaya, Krikara, O Chicano. Oh, O Baba Mashen, Basanti, O Jacana, Ure, Ure Mayo. Ruta, 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 Ikata. Ha. Uta Mire Dona. Ute Yo Maka Sana Ina. Yakutu. Shinta Mahaya. Shinta Mahaya Ratu. Ratu. Ah, Michelle. Michelle Shinota. She jik chukasa chukasa shika chukasa shika katu. Tikata shika tazo. Oh, man, is it a chicken? But the caraga would agree with the chicken with the pair of hundred and one children. I get a caraga. What an anonymous chicken on the neck. Yakada, 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 chukai yakada, chikaka, jura, chakura. Uk, mik, dok, ank, don't, ni, ho. Hoji in chicken, two don't change of the nah, and then look at it, so pop. いや、ほた、しゃく。しいたしいた。まらはまらや。まらやとと。まらやとと。ああ。ああ。はりプリス。や、や、ほた、かり。やんちらちらた、ちらとかどうじゃ。じゃんぱらはな。はてこら、こた
Simon, Shakurana, Shunukaka, Shunukaka, Kanusha. Sisas Muel, Daka Mishna, Dama, Wolf, Wolf, Saham, Yadato, Hua. In the higher. Taya, Mua, the Yasna, Hania, Mua, 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 Munda Ninia Narania Saya Torres Samoa Muntia Hadi Shantu Shahajika Chuda Dai Yuna Dai Nasaya Sana Bua Nia Daha Bua Sama Bua Yanti, Yanti, Tu Yanti, Tu Yanti. Tu Yanti, 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 Stan Yarika Jurika Harika Jurika Harika Karuja Karuja Juka. Mata kapaya rana, mata bata 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 Yendukaha Yaru 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 And now, thank you all. Switch back to English. Um, now we do the same thing just with the chant. <laughs> um, you're welcome to chant in the same order. You're welcome to chant uh, any melody, any tone, any words or no words whatsoever. Uh, just give us uh, a chant. And unfortunately, the system here, unfortunately, doesn't allow us to, to chant simultaneously. So we can do. It doesn't. It doesn't like when we do together. So we have to take turns. So again, we'll do the same pattern just just with the chanting. Mm, there is nothing I can say, just chant. Uh, the, again, the intention is the healing of the earth. And um, and again, the symbol is the same. And we will start, and uh, I will ask um, Katie to go after me. And, uh, and then the same order. Gurudan, um, decide now if you want to chant with us or you want to skip. Either way, it would be fine. No pressure. For Holly, we will. For Holly, we will leave uh, an empty time, so we'll let you chant. Gurudan, can you answer? Can you hear? Yes, I said okay, but I, I texted it. Yeah, okay. Oh, Go I ahead. see. Okay, so you will be chanting as well, right? Yeah. Thank you. All right. So, so we'll start, and then we'll go. Um,
too. Gurudan, now is your turn. Can do a simple OM next. Thank you. OM. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Carl, you are next. Yanoha. Go ahead. O Tumaha, O Chena, Rimekasa, Emana, Emayaho, Echire. So much of the Shahura And Michelle, thank you. And Michelle. Are you going to start me off? Yano hale hona le hona le hona eya hona eya ho ina. Thank you. Sarah, please go ahead. Take it off.
Holy next. Are you there? Can you hear? Can you speak? Still working on that, Max. Maybe uh, save her for last. All right, fine. Um, Simon. Thank you and stun. Thank you. And um, Holly disappeared, right? All right, we'll welcome her when she comes back. Let's chat a bit. Any comments, questions? There are a million types of chanting, million ways of chanting. Uh, the last one was the sweetest one. It's it's a, um, a lullaby. <laughs> That's what I sing to my children when they when they you know when they want help to get asleep or in the war when when they're upset. Uh, usually, I speak to. Um, in advance, when I do my first, I kind of introduce a newcomer, new patient to what I do, and I say, I will do some Chinese healing sounds, and don't be surprised, it sounds weird, like <laughs> and then I might chant, and that would be also for your healing. And usually they take it easy. If, if I, you know, if I ask if it would be all right, sometimes, you know, if I chant, and uh, usually it's like, 
when I feel feel comfortable with everybody, so nobody will be upset. Um, but my I had bad experience explaining what it is. Really, I can't explain, so I have to keep it secret. Basically, from now on, I just say it is something intended for healing, but it is mysterious. I can't explain what it is because otherwise they get you know they don't some of some of them don't understand. Or you have to really learn how to explain it in the way they they take it right. Any comments, questions so far? I'll wrap up that I, I I'm really happy how it went, and I'm you you doing you did really good. You did wonderfully. You did wonderfully. I was really happy how everybody did it. I will finish with a little chant, again blessing your initiation into chanting. I initiate you into chanting and galactic languages. And for those who already speak and chant, I bless your expansion and uh, beautification, becoming more beautiful in that direction. Ya <speaking in Spanish> All right, before Holly comes back, well, until Holly comes back, we'll continue the initiations. Next, so other initiations are much simpler. I don't ask you to improvise, so I just ask you to repeat. So basically, your, your training in Reiki becomes complete in a way you get the basics of the healing and now you you expand next would be if you want to become teacher it would be a next class or if you don't want to become teacher it's fine as well and um, you can expand in expand and also I don't know the word extend improve bold and make it stronger your main Reiki make it stronger your main Reiki practice. So again I'm I'm I would like to invite you to expand your learning in all possible healing directions. All healing modalities have something to offer you. One of the simplest uh, okay not simplest simplest starting points for that would be uh, acupuncture acupressure. So acupuncture, acupressure, famous for the Chinese origins, but there is other versions of other countries as well, uh, like Korean acupuncture and so on. Um, and, there, and it also comes with maxibustion. Maxibustion is so acupuncture is a needle, and usually they are sterile. Nowadays they're all disposable, disposable sterile, and. Um, the principle is mysterious what it does. It's it goes beyond physics, but basically it works as antenna. So when you plug in that metal needle, it's an antenna which is connected to your meridian, which is not a nerve, not a lymphatic vessel, nothing physical. It's non-material meridian, non-material. It's it is connected to the place where it is non-material ethereal meridian. Located, is located and it becomes an antenna which receives the healing. And some of the acupuncture uh, sessions are very mechanistic. They just plug the needle, go away, there is a music, but it's up to you what to do with it. And some of them are very spiritual. The acupuncturists actually work as a conductor of the healing power to you. Um, it works really well. It can work really well. In China they do they use acupuncture even for dental work and it works even for people who don't who don't believe in it it just kind of that removes the pain and uh, 
without anesthesia, you can do acupuncture anesthesia. The idea of acupuncture is about the same as in Reiki. It is about the balance of the flow, but they're not as much focused on the chakras as they are focused on the meridians that go through the whole body. And you can treat the same symptom on a different level on the same meridian. It could be in the hand, in the ear, in the foot, in any part in the body. Um, I had positive experience with acupuncture. It worked pretty much as Reiki for me. It was equivalent of a Reiki session. Um, I'm very sensitive to needles, so it's it's a little painful. So I I enjoy Reiki much more, but but it worked. Uh, so you can learn it by yourself. You obviously, you don't have to. Hi, Holly. Is your microphone working? I hope so. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, man! Finally. I was saying, I was saying all kinds of prayers. Oh, please. Yes. So I will now. It's your turn. And um, I will start. Initiation picture? Uh, it just blank. Oh. Well, let's hope the rest of it goes. Is it working now? No. I don't know why. It's being... All right. You have. You can have only one, either sound I a or. On the screen. You can send it to you. All right. You want to f to take the screenshot now? Oh, I already did it. Oh, thank you. All right. I, I apologize. I didn't have a moment to, to scan the pictures. I will finish that soon. While we're talking about the pictures, here is for you the initiation into a reptilian, reptilian uh, healing. So in, a reptilian healing uh, initiation symbol. Lashun, the reptilian initiation symbol. E
All right. Any comments, questions so far? All right. So next step. Um, so acupuncture. Uh, it's possible to find. So I'm not inviting you to punch needles everywhere because it's kind of a very strong. Again, it's there is negativity. It's dangerous. Uh, it's powerful, and as powerful thing, it is dangerous. So you have to know what you do. Yeah, acupuncture school takes much longer than Reiki school. Reiki school is eight hours here, eight hours there, eight hours here. So in 24 hours, you almost graduated. And in acupuncture, it's more like several thousand of hours. I don't remember how many thousand, but it's maybe usually like two or three year school or something like that. So they learn a lot. They learn um, the meridians, they learn the principles of uh, Chinese medicine, the balancing principles, and they learn uh, Chinese anatomy, basically the way how the organs function in Chinese, traditional Chinese medicine. So it's a big course. and. Um, It's, I invite you to start learning in that direction as well. It's okay to learn and to learn acupressure. So acupressure is the softest part of acupuncture. It's not as powerful, but it is sufficient. And it works, especially on, on sensitive people like me, it works pretty well. It works maybe even better than acupuncture because we are sensitive. So that point is the most favorite point in acupuncture. I forgot the name, of course. Does anybody remember the name of that point? You can Google it. It's like number one of acupuncture points. So, so that works for balancing of everything, for pain, for headache, for coming back to balance. So you basically you massage it right here, where the bones come together. You have to feel it, and especially when you are out of balance, you will feel pain. And when you balance, you kind of your intention is to remove that pain and restore the balance. So that one place, obviously, can do it from other side, but basically, typically, it's from outside. So on both hands, and also on the feet, the same point between their uh, big toe and other toes, right here, you can feel it between the bones. Uh, by the way, there is a lymphatic nose, there are nerves, but it's more important, it's meridian point. Um, that would be initial. So do it now, and I initiate you into studying acupressure. So go to YouTube, go to internet, uh, use opportunities to learn everywhere, and you can incorporate it into Reiki sessions. Jim does it. I do it. My Reiki healer, which I use now, does it. So, um, welcome to acupressure world. So, practice that. It's safe. It's good. And uh, expand from there. Do your, do, do your homework and research. And expand from there. Any comments and questions so far? Please give me some feedback. How are you doing? Doing good. Thank you. Yeah, good. All right. Yep, yeah, doing okay. I got a garbage truck here. <laughs> yeah, great. Thank you. All right, next is Qigong. So I already told this this is my favorite Qigong exercise, but I think I can teach you again if you didn't see it before. Uh, I love it. I use it all the time. And uh, my favorite Qigong, again, I don't remember the name, but here it goes. So basically the idea is to, uh, so Qigong is like Reiki, but again, Qigong teaching is forever. It's like lifelong teaching. It's very much uh, more complex than Reiki. And it uses movements of the hands to move the energy. So you move the hands. So my favorite exercise is where you move the energy from top to bottom, like that. 
and you breathe, you control the breathing again, and it really works well for heart, heartburn, for acid reflex, it works well for digestion moving down, for energy moving down. Sometimes it kind of revolves against you and the whole thing just moves up to your throat and your head. So moving the energy down is a good way of kind of grounding yourself and restoring the flow of energy, fluids, information, everything through. So let's do that. Do, uh, do it with me. So breathe in and you breathe in. Raise your hands and then breathe slowly out and push the energy down to your root chakra and release it down to the earth. That's about it. And push it. You can make the sound, you can make no sound, it doesn't matter. It's very basic. It's like coming back to the primitive organisms and all they did, they pushed the water through themselves and filtered the food out of the water. So you are doing exactly the same. Put the energy through and that's you know basic restoration of flow through yourself. I got the goosebumps out of that. I wish I knew how it is called, but you know, let's give it a name. Mm. Basic Qigong movement, basic Qigong movement, that would be the name. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, you wanted to, the, 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 the reference to the thing? Just, I'm fully equipped to do that. Okay, can you see it? Somehow it's, it's not, can you put my, my, my me on, on the screen? I think the Guru Dan has to do that. Guru Dan, can you see me on the big screen? Yeah, okay, now, thank you. All right, so then I have to click a button, and then I click another button. Then I click another button, and here we go. I paste the link to the to the image with the reptilian um, healing, Lashunda healing, reptilian initiation, invitation. All right, next one is. Um, is, um, I guess, the basic of Tai Chi. So Tai Chi is very close to Qigong. The difference is that, is that uh, it's very slow. It started as a martial art, but then it became uh, a popular, it's still very popular in China. Uh, you see those people slowly dancing on the uh, outside, and moving the energy, so that there is a short form, a long form of Tai Chi, and, and other versions. But basically, learn the short form. It's, it's there on YouTube. Find the one which you like and learn it. It's really good for energy movement. What I can say is, at some point, I overdid it because when you move the energy, I was too heavy. I was moving it's really like Reiki style, like really, really, really strongly. So, it's intention, and also it is how you move your hands. So I move, I pushed it like really, 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 really strongly. And you make balance, make it kind of lighter touch. It has to be like lighter. Do it, do it a little slow, but lighter. It's not even the speed. It's more like, I guess it is intention, which you can see how it moves in. So, so th that is one part of the Tai Chi, one of the basic, you kind of get rid of the attack and kind of retract. So that's one of the basic Tai Chi movements. You, so you kind of, you, 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 when somebody attacking you, you kind of push it away and retract. So, so energy wise, how do you say that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, retracting and while keeping yourself protected. Retracting, retracting while keeping yourself protected. So it's one of the most basic movements of Tai Chi. I do it too fast. It, it goes a little bit slower. It's like, like, like that. 
All right, another one Tai Chi movement is that it's sending the energy in the circle and also growing the ball of energy. It's a, it's a classical, it's, that's how you start Tai Chi exercise. And then there are different versions what you do with it, but one of them is you accumulate the energy, accumulate the energy here, and then you send it to your head. And then to your root chakra. And then to your heart. All right. So that's initiation into Tai Chi. Um, Um, any questions and comments so far? None no for me, Max. Thank you. Yeah, I, I got a comment. I uh, yes. Um, I had quite a a couple chapters in my life where I did a lot of martial arts, and uh, it uh, eventually I just got tired of it because. I decided it'd be more interesting to do something creative than something destructive and so I basically gave it up and then I started dancing and I never looked back but now that you're doing that Tai Chi it reminds me of a lot of the stuff that I used to do every day for a lot of time and I didn't even know about spirituality or energy I just it was just something that I did that felt good and it made me it made like my reflexes like a lot better and I didn't understand that there was an energy component it was just something that I did because it worked instead of doing push-ups I would do that and just because my teacher told me and it worked and that's all that I knew so I'm thinking about revisiting some of that now but in a healing way instead of like a attacking way so thank you thank you yeah that will be the path of Tai Chi and Qigong, yes. All right. Um, thank you. Prompted me uh, last time I taught uh, about the Manosov's, Manosov's uh, teaching about ancient Atlantis um, separation idea. And I, I finished the main part, but obviously there is lots of comments to it. So, so one of the comments is exactly what, what you mentioned. So during your life, you grow your spirit body. It is the process of nurturing your spirit and growing it. You do it either consciously or unconsciously. And <clears throat> in your <clears throat> past, you did it unconsciously. You just, you know, it felt good, and that's why you did it. And now you have more opportunity to do it to do it consciously. So it grows anyway. But if you do it consciously, it grows better. It grows better, especially if you do you do meditations and other spiritual practices, and Reiki and self Reiki, which help grow in your spiritual body. Um, you do it many lifetimes, but every lifetime it's it's a new process. It's part of the big part of the spirit is the same but you grow a new part your new fruit on the tree of life you grow you help the new fruit to grow on the tree of life analogies could be many one of them is really a fruit another one is the tree has a root system and the upper part so root system is down below and upper part is up there and each of them are essential for the growth of the tree the roots could be the spirit part and the green green part could die every year and then grow again so that would be analogy one of the analogies another analogy would be the opposite so the roots are say if you had a a seaweed which could put the roots in the ground and then 
re release them and float somewhere. So that would be another idea of the spirit kind of being in the in the air in the sky and then it roots on the in the ground for a lifetime. Uh, a nice analogy would be symbiosis between, say, a tree and mushroom. None of them can exist without each other. Many trees are dependent on mushrooms on collecting water, and mushrooms are dependent on the trees to get some nutrients from light, the sugars from light. So, so the soul and the the body are dependent on each other. The the soul grows based on the experience the body obtains. So we are symbionts. We are symbionts. The body and the soul are symbionts. We are. Collaborating, cooperating symbiotically to to help each other. Um, so the Atlantean experiment was very interesting. They put a lot of separations, a lot of hierarchy in the system, and it produced lots of energy, a lots of opportunities, and a lots of variety, a lot of varieties. But it came to the self destruction of Atlantis because the energies were too suicidal and Atlantis destroyed itself it was the biggest downfall of the humanity in the history and now we are still dealing with that suicidal spiritual const construct of the humanity the idea of separation of chakras the idea of separation from the spirit into the material so these ideas are producing a lot of variety. It's very vital. It's a very full of energy. But again, it's full of energy plus suicidal. So now the humanity goes into new phase, last few hundred years, where this separation is healed. The veil is dissolved, is being dissolved. And... Um, it is a release and healing, but also a challenge, also a challenge. So this, that caste system was first caste, physical worker, second caste, the trader, third caste, the rulers the and soldiers, the, the warriors, and the fourth, fourth caste, the scientists, religious, priests, um, artists. Now it's all mixed together. In the past, it was not only the separation of the spirit roles and development of chakras. It was also genetic separation. Each caste has had uh, different genes, so which supported the dominance of the lower chakra for the physical, second chakra for traders, third chakra for the warriors, and the fourth and upper chakras for the priests, spirits, scientists, uh, priests, um, scientists, artists. Now it's all coming together, it's all permitted, the, the jumps and mixtures are permitted, now we all mixed together and aliens are introducing their genes to allow us to harmonize the chakras to bring our vibration up. So anybody can progress in one life from very simplistic physical to to spiritual. And this process goes through the growth, planting, gardening of your spirit. You can't really think your spirit into growth. You can't really do, hmm, how do you call it, work your spirit into growth. You cannot really do the work for the spirit. You can't really do actions other than 
continuous support and uh, plantation work, gardening work. So, so it's not single single events which which grow your spirit. It is the garden work where you create the conditions and let your spirit grow. So, what are these conditions? There are, of of, of course, there is not no you no universal rule, but basically you have to live your life in full to get the conditions for the spirit to grow. And you have to, you it, it really helps to meditate and do your spiritual practice to, with an intention for the, for your spirit, spirit body, bodies to, to grow. Intention is important. Living your life full with full energy is important uh, using your body to get the experiences which are put on your in your contract is important so basically you have been gently pushed to heal your past karmas some of the past karmas and to resolve the issues so in the beginning of your life you are being taught a lot of traditional habits, traditional habits, behavioral habits, and behavioral belief systems. And now what you do, you heal all those belief systems as, as you grow, and, and not only discard them, but discard them with understanding of the transcendence Understanding of the transcendence, the, the habitual transcendence of, of this belief system. So you learn how to transcend the old belief systems into the new understanding. Any comments, questions so far? No, oh, good here. Thank you. Um, so basically, it's your level of where you are chakra wise, your level of your spiritual maturity is defined or spiritual frequency is defined by the energy flow that goes through you, or the spiritual energy flow. So being successful spiritually is being help, helped by good health by good moods, good spirits, and I mean, the word is good um, behavior, no, there is no word for that, um, good kind life, yeah, being good human, that's the word, of, by being good human, by uh, doing things, by social interactions, other people are helping you and you are helping other people to spiritually grow. And that is a very interesting need for balance, need for balance. So, so Krishna Das, in one of his workshops which I shared, uh, shares a story about someone who had no ego, no personality. It's uh, it's called in psychiatry, it's called borderline personality disorder, meaning the person forgets who they are, and that's, that's crazy as he describes, because the person can't really function. Whatever they experience at the moment is affecting them so much that they forget who they are, and uh, they go from one experience to another without retaining retaining the themselves and it's basically suicidal life uh, so they get on drugs and uh, and stuff and they can't stop because they don't have that understanding of who they are why they're here uh, what do they want so having that healthy ego is important to survive in this place and basically learn be successful in grow in your spirit and be successful in going through life lessons. Um, so in, in yoga, there is that 
nice exercise. It's more symbolic than it's very symbolic. So left hand, even if your right hand, left hand faces you and right hand faces outer world. So this symbol symbolizes your connection to the outer world with the energy, right hand. Left hand symbolizes your personality, your healthy ego, your self, self, uh, strength of yourself. And then you, when you turn left, you breathe in. And when you turn right, slowly you breathe out and you, uh, you, you turn right. And then you turn left. And you don't focus your eyes on your hands. You focus beyond and unfocus, basically, unfocus. You see the whole world as it is. And then you turn left and do it with me. And right. And breathe in. Breathe out. Breathing. <sighs> Breathing. Breathe out. So basically, the idea of that exercise is to symbolize the value of you being connected with others and the value of you being yourself. It is. In that balance, you discover yourself, and you help others to discover. You help them to, to discover themselves and learn their lessons. Again, it is a computer game, multiplayer computer game, and you use that that computer game to learn your lessons, and other people in that game, other spirits are helping you to learn your lessons and you help them to learn their lessons. And the key is to raise the level of the lessons. You don't want to keep to be learning the lessons of kindergarten. You want to go higher and learn higher lessons. You want to go to level three and level four and level five. So to do that you have to raise the vibration of the lessons, raise, define the area of where you want to play, you define it, it's your choice. And that that is the new definition of success. So success is the ability to learn the lessons, learn the lessons on a higher level. Now, if you go too high into the lessons, if you want, if you lose your ground and you go into the spirit too much, as some of our friends, you become impractical, and your financial situation and uh, health might suffer. So, so keeping all of that in balance is art, which it requires some garden, gardening on every level. You have to garden your finances and cater to the financial spirits, to norms and other elementals to, which support your finances. Same with food, same with sleep, same with your health, same with your friend circle. You have to nurture every level of your existence, wider circle, Protect yourself from the politics and nurture, garden your existence. So within that garden, within that balance, you can learn your lesson, lessons of higher level and help others to raise their le level of their lessons. Any comments, questions so far? I think I have about five minutes left. Yeah, Max, um, I have a comment, which is uh, a couple of years ago, when I first started getting into spirituality, something just occurred to me one day when I was talking about money and success and career and all this, 
and uh, I spent most of my time working out and everything and people would say well why do you do that all the time what don't you want to be successful and I said you know what for me success is when your behavior and your values are the same thing so when that's congruent doesn't matter what your values are if you're acting on it you're successful thank you yes yeah um, there is a book by uh, Michael Newton um, about destiny of the soul and journey of the soul and he describes uh, how some spirits grow and progress very fast in their lessons while remaining socially low you don't have to really become exposed and uh, you know become a celebrity to to do a spiritual growth it's uh, but but many lessons you only can learn lessons of compassion and uh, fixing your old belief systems and uh, transcending the old belief systems you only can do it in a society you need, you need other people to be part of that so so yeah uh, growing your having your healthy circle of friends and social circles is essential hold on a second Uh, one last thing I wanted to say, um, or maybe not last, almost last. One thing I wanted to say, uh, do your medical education as well. Do your research, um, study from Wikipedia, continue on YouTube. Uh, for every new disease, disorder, medical problem, do your homework. Become an expert. Uh, uh, the next next stop is Amazon. There are, there are very cheap books on Amazon. Uh, there are websites uh, where people like you are doing their research and exchange their knowledge. So typically, for every disease, there is like at least one good forum where people anonymously, often anonymously, uh, exchange what they found about that problem and it's often moderated by enlightened doctors who medical doctors who who help uh, help and comment and and usually it's 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 amazing what you can learn there which you can't learn anywhere else basically actual stories of different patients who went through the condition and uh, and what 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 was the experience short term long term and so on um, local local healers um, I, I use Google Maps and I just find local healers and I connect to them one way or another send them emails uh, visit them uh, go to meetups Reiki, uh, Reiki meetups other healing meetups and uh, and in some in some places uh, meetup.com is is functioning well and in other places like San Diego it's not it's not functioning, so there is something wrong with it. Um, so, so there are meetings which go beyond, and there are groups and networking places which which don't, which are not represented well on Meetup.com. But there are still networking places for light workers to to meet and 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 um, for Reiki people to to meet and socialize. So, like one of them is uh, health fairs. Where uh, people come together and uh, there are some, they just kind of talk and chat and meet. So that is important to be part of that circle. So I encourage you. You are now, now becoming Reiki masters. So I encourage you to connect to people, uh, make your business card, or carry a piece of paper and leave the coordinates or exchange. Now nowadays we can just text each other to connect and. Uh, um, many people are open, and uh, 
sometimes you just need maybe one lesson. Sometimes you need a couple of lessons, but you kind of learn from them what they know. You share with them your experience and uh, find a way how you could be useful to others. Like my, my way how I can be useful to others is I can invite people to human colony. I invite people to watch my Reiki classes. Uh, read my books. I can offer people video interviews. I can help people with uh, their websites, fixing their computers, giving them Reiki. So, so barter. Yeah, even if you don't have money, barter, and um, it works pretty well. Many people accept that, and uh, they learn also from that as well. And many people are true healers, and true healers just help others. So, so. Um, Go out, you know, at your pace, don't rush, but at your pace, go out and network. And also, uh, give people an excuse to talk to you. Like, if people don't want to talk to, talk to you, that's fine, but, but I usually give them an excuse to talk to me. So, so like like yesterday, I was, somebody sat on my table and um, I asked them if, they, if they're local and then asked them if they saw aliens around, right? That's what I do. And of course, they saw aliens, and uh, that was a nice conversation, very spiritual, and uh, and that was so. Give 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 people an excuse to start the contact. Maybe sometimes it's enough to have a little bit. As Krishna Das says, you walk on the street, and some people you don't notice; they just pass through your field of view without any impact, and some people. You notice some people make an impression on you, and some people make an absolutely huge impact on you, even if you don't communicate. And that is defined by your past, by your past karmas. You have some karmic depths, depth, depths to other people, and for, without with some people, you don't have any relation whatsoever, even in, in the past life. So, so. Probe them, probe them, probe them. Give them an excuse to talk, say hi, open the conversation, and if they feel in inclined, then they, they will follow. So invite people to, to connect. Like lately, if somebody bumps into me, I usually assume it, it has a spiritual reason. It has karmic reason. And if it doesn't, I'm, very, I'm usually very surprised. I'm, I'm, so sometimes people come for you know a little advice or give to give me a message. So I usually explore explore the new connection sufficiently enough to see if if there is a message for me or if I have to deliver some message. And if I have to deliver the message, I just find the words to deliver it. I think I'm done for now. Any comments, questions? No, thank you, Max. All right, so I will I will send you the uh, the uh, symbols and uh, a few more sources which I like, and I bless you with your continued lesson of today, and I bless your learning forever. Continue learning, expand your learning do the learning. Serve others and raise the level of your lessons. That's my blessing of today. Serve others and raise the level of your lessons. Alright, Jim, take it over. Thanks, Max. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Max. Thanks, Max.
Jim, might we would be able to take a little break before the next segment starts? Can we take like a 10 minute and get going here? You're muted. I can't hear you. We need 10? Well, we've been sitting here for two hours. Yeah, 10 might, <laughs> might be necessary unless Jim says we only have five. I'm waiting for Jim to unmute and see what he says. Take a 10 minute break. Awesome. I'll Thank see you. I'll you at 2 o'clock. All right, so you guys all talking, here. I was talking and um, I have was on mute, so it didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't need to hear um, that part, that's why. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, take a 10 minute break, and I'm going, and then she said, should we say here, take it, should we take a break? And I'm going, I just said that. Oh, I'm on mute. All okay. Right. All right, see you all back here in a moment. 10 minutes, I'll see you at 2 o'clock. Yeah, Carl's here too. Carl's here. All righty. Katie's here. Katie's here. All right, we're all back. Everybody's back, Jim. Oh, wonderful. Hello, everybody. Um, I wanted to ask, did everybody get the, um, the information uh, that was sent out originally for the Reiki classes, the Reiki booklet or whatever it was called? The Maloney Manual? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Has everybody read it, actually? Yeah. I read um, most of it. And I, my computer went through an operating system thing, and I lost all of it. Oh, somebody can. Uh, would somebody send her another copy of that? Because yeah. there's a lot of information in there that's not covered in the class that right. you learn sort of on your own. You read about it, and there it's it's important stuff too. Because if you have any questions about anything you read. Please give us a call. Give me a call, and I will walk it through you so that with you that you understand it, and it is um, something that's usable. Because every bit of Reiki is usable, but if you don't understand it, you can't use it. So that's why I'm asking if everybody got their booklet. I would like you all to at least glance through it, and if there's something that catches your eye of interest, to read that particular portion. Because obviously that's meant for you and it's meant for you to understand it as well. So please get in touch with us because I know that we uh, didn't go through the Reiki manual like uh, verbatim, you know, like page by page. So please do that little bit of homework. It's really not that much homework. Well, it is a little bit. But um, it will benefit you a great deal. Does it? Does everybody understand? Did anybody read any parts that they really need some clarification on? I have a question, okay. uh, Jim, about that the white light and that really complicated looking symbol. It was the last uh, question. I, I can hardly hear you. Can you speak up? I had a question about the white light and the complicated looking symbol. Uh, the Han Charles A. Show Nen? No. Or the Dicomio? No, no it was the fire. I think, yeah, it was that. The, hang on. Um, it was the very last one in the yeah, book. Give me just a moment. I need to scroll to it. I've got it open, but it's at the bottom. Hang on. It, it seems to be made with a paintbrush. And it's not, oh. it's not explained in the, in the manual at all. Uh, it's oh, just, what uh, symbol is it? I don't have the book right in front of me and I should because there's something in the book that I need. So um, It's the Asui white light symbol. The Asui white light symbol and yes. what does it look like? It's not something that I taught. Is it, it? It's the white light is the pure life force. The vibration of the symbol is called the primal energy of life directly from the creator and it is something akin, it, it kind of looks like half of the Reiki symbols I'll put in a row and I'll kind of blob together. It's a really pretty interesting symbol, but it doesn't right. show its directions or anything, but it is a complex white light symbol that, that she's talking about. All right, that is not a symbol that that I was taught, so okay. I, do, I don't teach it either. Nobody taught me that white light symbol. And the thing is, the dichomios, both of the dichomios 
are white light symbols as well. This is just another one, and it's what I don't think you you may want to learn it. It's but what the the dichomios are are the it's taking source the light white light from source energy and bringing it into your healing. You're bringing God into the healing uh, portion of your pro program. So this is another one of those symbols that come from white light source. And the dichomios the di and the tib Tibetan dichomio, they also start with the white light and they, are, they expand out from there and are different kinds of healing modems that encompass emotions, um, of, you know, and every part of healing and Reiki that's covered, putting the energy here, um, you know, long distance as well, or any kind of distance across the room, five feet away, or whatever it is, it's it encompasses all these things. Now, what I told you before also was that I still use all the other symbols because I use them in their own way and concentration in their way because sometimes the dichomio spreads out and your intention cannot it is such a broad symbol the dichomio I, I love it and it's beautiful and it enhances everything but sometimes I want to be specific and that's why I use the other symbols as well does that answer your question a little bit yes thank you you're welcome it's just another symbol of that is similar to the dichomios. Thank it probably you. has a little bit of its own significance, but uh, the two dichomios are from the white light source. So it is beautiful. Now today, is there any questions, any more questions? I'd yeah. like to, um, to suggest something to the, the other people. Um, yes. About the manuals, if you want on YouTube, you can find you can find the videos that uh, cover the um, the manuals, and uh, so yeah, it's basically word for word what is on the manuals. Yes, it is so. because there is um, other kinds. Of, there's emotional clearing. There's different kinds of uh, uh, things in the manual that we are not actually covering in the class verbatim. But if you need some help understanding these different principles and things, uh, we can help you with that. The Seheiki is also an emotional clearing. That's why sometimes we don't do double. There's more than one way to skin a cat, basically. And some of these are repetitious in different ways that might fit your modality or style better. But this is the style that fits us, so we don't... We don't teach all the different styles. There's also, uh, you know, different kinds of clearings that we haven't gone over, and psychic surgery we didn't go over. But um, I, if if somebody takes the teaching class, I will go over psychic surgery because I think that's really more of a, an a something that as, as you learn it, you should be able to teach it too. So, did anybody see that in there about the psychic surgery? Yeah, I saw that part. That was very interesting. Yeah, I read the, I read that portion. Yeah, uh, psychic because... surgery is actually um, to do an intention, and it has certain hand motions that if you feel like there's something there in the person, like an emotion or uh, a, some kind of growth or some kind of or pain that it's actually coming out of the skin, you can actually do some psychic surgery and get that out of the way so that you can do better healing. So if anybody wants uh, a little private tutoring on that, I can give that to them later. But you really have to be able to feel the energy coming out of the person to be able to do that. Not the energy going in that you're doing, but you have to be able to feel the energy that's coming out. So I could work with you on that, but there are things like that in the book that don't, it's not for everybody, but those people that can have the abilities to use them can use them. So I can, if you do have those abilities, it's wonderful, and I will help you with them. 
So, but uh, any other questions? No, I'm good. Well, the reason why it came up for me, it came up previously through another conversation, and um, it, it's become useful to me knowing the, that information because I'm dealing Excellent. with across vast distances and things, et cetera, and so it became important to me to kind of pay attention to what's going in, what's going out kind of idea. So that, that was very Excellent. helpful to me. Um, the others, I guess, can go or grow uh, into that idea as, as, they, as they do. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Let's get to the tins today. Uh, I know that in uh, Reiki uh, 2 class, we learned the first two aspects of Tins Che. And they are the grounding. Oh, can, we, can you read this? The grounding and the pulling up to the next uh, dimension. Okay? I'm going to go through those right now. Uh, did anybody need to see that any longer? This is the Tin Che. You'll know it looks like a Choku Ray, okay? Except it doesn't have the little hat on it. The, the hat. And it's used a little differently. And it comes with its own attunement. And it has four different things that can be it can be used for. It can be used for grounding, pulling up to the fourth dimension or next dimension. Um atmospheric uh, balance and atmospheric clearing. That's a little too close, Jim. Like, we can not see. There you go. How's that? Much better. I will go over the, the first two first. Is, is that good enough for you right there? Yep. I'll go over these two first. The grounding uh, and that's the down stroke and the the drowned strokes and the pulling up to the next dimension with the, which is the up strokes and I'll show you how to do that pay pay attention because I'm going to show you how it's done the first is grounding what I did not teach the last time is that the first stroke of grounding is the the line down right I did teach that, I think, but I didn't teach that you. it's double. I'm not sure what, if you know what that means. Um, but you, you start down here with the grounding technique. Do you see where my finger is? And you go around. You make the line first, first the line. Then you go around. And when you hit the middle in your head you go down you draw another it's like you're a double lining from here to here because you you already went down but when you get to the middle you go down again okay so you go down around 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 and down that's the grounding it's two strokes down the first one and then you go around and then the second one. But it only is from here. The second one only goes from the center down. Does everybody get that? Any questions? This is for grounding. That is the grounding, the very first one. And it's the down strokes. The down is representative of moving into the planet, no matter what planet you're on. We're on Earth, so it's moving into Mother Earth. Okay? It's the grounding into Mother Earth. Any questions? All right, then the next one is the pulling up to the, to the next dimension. Pulling up to the next dimension. Now, you start here, and you make a line up. Okay? Then you start at the center, and you go around, and you go around, and you come down here and go up again, the full line. So it's like you've done this line twice. You start here, go up, you start at the center, 
go around, and when you get to the bottom, you go up again. And that is the pulling up to the next dimension. Now, this is used on any dimension to go to pull up to the next dimension after you are grounded. You must be grounded before you can pull up to the next dimension. So that's why grounding is first, and that's the downstrokes. And the upstrokes are pulling up to the next dimension. Any questions? Do you need me to do that again? I'll do it one more yeah, one time. More, one one more time. Yeah. You start here for the pulling up at this point here. You make a line for up, all right? Then you start here in the middle on the line, and you go one, two, three, and you stop here, and you pull up again. So it's a double up line. It overlaps. It overlaps. This line is drawn twice, actually. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay, very good. That is the pulling up to the next dimension. And you can only do it after someone is grounded. Now, if they're grounded, you don't have to do the grounding, Tinche. But I would check, I, for myself, I would probably do it anyway to make sure before you pull them up to the next, gener next dimension. Okay? Jim, I have a question. Yes. Last class we had, um, yes. Potosis, you, I, if I remember correctly, you said this was for extreme emotional situations? Yes. It's also for extreme emotional situations where uh, grounding is absolutely necessary. Uh, but the pulling up to the next, the, yes, you can use that for, well, it could, I'm not sure if it, emergency. She's saying to me it's not necessarily an emergency. You can use it in an emergency for sure. If somebody needs grounding very quickly, that's uh -huh. very unusual that that would happen. Oh, but, um, I've needed that before. <laughs> um, I've, been in, I've experienced situations where that would have come in real handy. <laughs> okay, very good. Well, state your intention that this is for grounding and that you're going to do this right away. So, so we you can, can visualize use this. You can visualize this and draw it in the air or draw it inside or draw it over the yeah. person that you're working with, yeah. your client, your whatever. Okay. You can draw it over them, Yeah. which is the best thing because what this is doing, you see, if you draw it right over the, the front of them, one, two, three, four, five, six, there's only six um, connections here. The seventh would be the crown, but for this, you don't need the crown. You only need those six chakras. Mm -hmm. So my question then is, is this for only use, is it, only, is it specifically used for extreme emotional pain, trauma, whatever, or is it a general use? Actually, it's a grounding tool for people that, all right, say that somebody is has emotional distress. Usually when that happens, you're right that they are not grounded. So you can use this to help them ground into um, a more basic understanding of what they're going through. So you can do this grounding. This is This has been around for thousands of years according to what I've been understanding. Uh, the spiral is so you see that the spiral is used in a lot of different Reiki symbols. Yeah. This is not, not necessarily a Reiki symbol right. but it is a power symbol for right. grounding and this can help in health but it's mostly for getting somebody grounded. So Jim, is it, do you use it in every session then? Like no, you don't have to use it at every session. The, oh, that's a very good question. Thank you for saying that. No, you don't need the Tinch Che for every session. But it is important if somebody is like emotionally unbalanced or anything like that. You might use the Seheiki to help with emotional clearing and things of that nature. 
But if the if you realize that they're not grounded, yeah, then this you can one is them. like the power. So this is the power symbol to get them from losing yes. marbles to center. This has its yes. Wrapped. This has its own attunement. That's how strong it is. Okay. It to use this, you have to have an attunement. Ish gave an attunement for the first two parts of the Tins Che last time. But now he's not here today, so we're going to ha hear a, the Arcturian form of the Tinch Che attunement, which is, I don't know if it, how much, how close it is, but it should be close. Um, and then for pulling up to the next, now if somebody is trying to channel, or if somebody is trying to enlighten themselves or get better information, or or they've been floating around in the fourth dimension and not being able to get any information be to come back, then you ground them and you bring them up through to the fourth dimension and they'll have a better connection. That is the, that is the point of the second part, the, um, the pulling up to the next, the next dimension so that they can get the information they need if they need information from there. So does everyone understand that so far? I'm sure there's a at least yeah. one question. No, it's I have good. A question. So sure. Very good. Um, if I am feeling particularly like, let's say I'm in a bad headspace. Okay. Or my client is in a bad headspace and they're on a spiritual path, or even not, like. Can I get myself, I can use this one to get myself from, like, having a lot of 3D thoughts, like not trusting, you know, right. or whatever. Can I get, will this symbol help me move from that space to, like, a more... Yes. When you, yes, and so, you have to use it correctly, though. What I mean by that is this is to help ground... If they're in a emotionally unsettled space, you might want to use, say, Heiki. That's a little softer. But if they're really out there... Yeah, I've used it Yes, I would ground them first. I would ground them first before I use, say, Heiki. And this is a powerful grounding tool, so it will bring them right down. But what to, about going to the fourth dimension, like the second use? I thought you were on that The mode. second use is if somebody is... This is for those that are on a spiritual journey. And the second use is to pull up to the next dimension, which is a way that uh, aliens all over for many generations use to pull up to the next generation to bring information back to, for them to use. Like what, I, what channelers do, they, they actually, when they're channeling, sometimes enter the fourth dimension to bring back information to the earth so it's understandable. If you just go to the fourth dimension without being grounded, you can it can be just a lot of like floating in trees and seeing f magic frogs and stuff like that, which doesn't really translate to anybody as being very useful. But when have you ever run into those channelers where they just are running through magic fields and they're looking at the treetops and they're they're lost in the fourth dimension they're not bringing any information back but they're seeing the fourth dimension they're just not grounded up through to it because they're not bringing any valuable information back they're just seeing trees and kitty cats and sitting in branches and stuff like that yes and many uh, some channelers go through that period where all they have is that free spirit of the fourth dimension, but they're not bringing any information back to mankind or for themselves. Does that make sense to you? Yes. However, what I'm asking was on the second thing. If I am in a real 3D mindset or my client is in a real 3D mindset, after I've grounded them, and I want them to be in a more spiritual, or I want to be in a more spiritual mindset. Yes. Does this bring me it, the, to the point? That is a proper use, yes. You can, you can send them, uh, ground them up through to the next dimension, 
and it will become a much more spiritual conversation. It will be a much more spiritual headspace or a much more informational headspace, depending on what kind of uh, thought processes you're having at that time. It can be informational, it could be spiritual, it could be technological, it could be many different things. But if you intend it to be spiritual and you bring it up through the fourth dimension, sure, that's what it's going to be. Thank you. You're welcome. Jim, I have a question uh, about the, yeah. uh, the going up to the next dimension as well. So I'm not sure, I can't remember if I mentioned it, but uh, in my past I'd, I've done a lot of dancing and I remember like you know, spending hours learning dance moves and all this kind of stuff. And every once in a while, I would just kind of like almost like channel dance moves that I never knew before. And I didn't know yeah. that's what I was doing. But yes. I see now that it's a thing, so I could use this symbol to basically do that. Yes. Yeah. Basically, you were touching on going, pulling up through. You must have been pretty grounded to bring it back into a useful state. But this will help you to ground so that you can can bring even more information back and yes if you intended to help you find more dance moves or whatever yes you can uh, ground on up to the fourth dimension and they will speak to you about it or you can find the information there and bring it back excellent thank you now you it also works on your belief system if you don't believe it works it won't work but if you do which it does because I've used it already it's very interesting. I love it. So, all right. Does everybody, any more questions on the Tinch Che on either grounding or going up? I have a, I have a, I have a question, Jim. Yes. Um, can you give a, a, a visual example of someone actually doing that uh, on themselves so I can see, like... Oh, you mean drawing it on yourself? Yeah, yeah, like if you were like, I want to do the Tinch Che on myself. Uh, grounding. You would just... Oh. Can you Hold show on. us real quick? You would do it from the neck down. The Tinch Che would have to be drawn on the body, right on okay. the major part of the body, because um, the crown is not really involved in the Tinch Che, even though that there is a uh, attunement for all these... For the for the Tinch J and it includes six chakras. The crown's really not involved because that's more of a life or death kind of chakra, and this is not involved in that. So, but you would draw it from if you were drawing. I I, I don't know if my stomach's too big to fit on the whole screen, <laughs> but <laughs> you're good. But you come down like that, and you would you know you would. If you're doing the grounding, you would come down like that, and then you would start your spiral. Would it be? And then it would end there and go down again. You know, um, that's how I would draw it on myself. But I would draw it much slower. Actually, I would try to just be very um, as much uh, into it as possible. But yes, that's how I would do it. Is grounding on yourself? Grounding on yourself. Clockwise or clockwise? Um, let's see. Would be whatever that's on there. I, I, I just draw it on myself as I felt natural to. So, I did it counterclockwise actually on myself. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I felt. I have yeah. Okay. Um, the one to pull in through the from the fourth dimension, is that yes. all dimensions above four, so fourth and above? This one usually only goes, most people are only usually ready for the next uh, next dimension. Not very many people are ready to go pull up through more than one dimension. It's That's, a, that's pretty hard to do anyway. But because um, you have to remember that the fourth dimension is uh, different enough that you can't live there. Right. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So to pull up to the fourth, and then I think this is only my thought process. You can ask to Kirk when she comes what she thinks of this, but I would think if you are able to 
pull up through another to another dimension, you will slowly move through the fourth dimension to the fifth. I don't think that you would go there automatically because there would it would be too quick and there would be too many changes. But you might, if you're staying in that state, move up slowly into the next one. Yeah, I, I'm asking because um, just recently, about a week or two ago, I noted, well, I, I dreamt that I was moving through the dimensions, like all the way to the Yes, world. yes. That, that's fine. That's mind-blowing. Uh, yes, and did, but you didn't suffer any psychotic effects, which no. I think some people would. So you're ready to, to move through the dimensions a little faster, even without the Tinch J, so that's fine. Okay, I just I was just wondering that because of... Not everybody needs a tool to get where they need to go, but some people do need the tool to get where they're going because they, it's a way to get there safely and they can trust that it'll get them there in a, a good way. So, right. But not all, everybody needs a tool to get to the fourth dimension or ground or anything of that nature. They, they can do that on their own. Or some people, most people can at least ground on their own. I'm not sure if they can pull up through the fourth dimension on their own, but I'm sure that there are those that can do it without any help at all. Okay, I see what you're saying now. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any more questions? Did you was that a good enough example for you? Look at that stomach. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> Don't worry, Jim. We love you. <laughs> uh, so, Jim, I I have a very okay. So this is really for information gathering. Is that Yes, and it is to move there safely and and for to be able to connect with it in a real way and not just float around and be there uh, like you s smoked a little dope and you're just like, ah. Um, okay, cool, thanks. This is for information, yes, if you need it. Do you have to repeat the name of the symbol three times when you do it? You can you can say Tinch J, yes. You can uh, announce that it's the Tinch J and that it's for whatever purpose, for grounding uh, or for um, whatever you're going to do with it. I, I like to announce that. That is a good point. It's best to let it know what it's going to be doing before you do it. Are we ready to move on to the third and fourth uses? Yes, Jim. All right. Yes. The third use. All right, here we go. Can you see that? Is that too close? It's for atmospheric balance is number three, and then atmospheric cleansing, number four. Now, you might say, what's atmospheric balance? Oh, did, did you need to see that a little longer? All right. Now, atmospheric balance is when you go into somewhere, if you've ever been to a, me a place where you walked into the room and you felt immediately uncomfortable, now, immediately uncomfortable in the sense that the room is not, there's something not right about the room. Now, you may say, oh, that's for cleansing. Not necessarily. It might be that the room is slightly out of phase. Those of you that can uh, feel dimensional shift and feel the different uh, ways that the atmosphere shifts, the barometer and all that, Many people can tell when it's going to rain just because their little toe hurts or whatever. There are those people that are very sensitive to the atmosphere around them. Not necessarily that it needs cleansed, but it needs balanced in the sense that there's it's, there, it's just not right. There's something wrong with the actual texture of the atmosphere. Has anybody experienced that? 
Yes. yes. Yeah, I think we all have at one point. Okay. Or so this is for atmospheric balance. Let me show you. You turn the tints che to the left. Oops. Can you still see that? Yeah, just barely. Let me move with the chair. How's that? That's good. Jim. It has to be facing left because the bottom is the closed bottom has to be to the left. All right. So then, what do you do? It's this. It's very similar to what you do for the other, except it's on its side. So. For atmospheric ba balance, you start over here, you make the line, then you start at the center, go around, but do you remember you're starting at the center and going around up and down, not side to side, and you end here and go out that way. It's exactly the same except it's on the side. Can you do that in your head? Can you picture that in your head? You hey, start John, here. Can you do it again, Jim? Are we seeing this in reverse because of the camera? Uh, maybe. I'm not sure. Are you starting on the right side, Jim? Is that the right to you? That's the right to us. Then that is correct. Okay. Right to left. You're, you're coming to the left for atmospheric balance. You start on the right, you come to the left. Okay. Then you start at the center and go up and down and up and down until you get to this point and then come out to the right, left again. Cool. That's for atmospheric balance. I know, it seems, it took me a. This is the one that took me the longest to learn. These ones on the side, I'm going, what? Um, but you start here on the right. It says that on here. If you read it on there, it says start at the right. Move the line to the right. Then start at the center and go around and then move to the right again. Did you get that? Now, what they're saying about this is the atmospheric balance thing, you might have to do it more than once because some atmospheric balances are stronger than others. But they're saying, yes, do it as many times as you feel necessary to, to balance out that, that atmosphere because some are way out of line especially in certain buildings where there were like strange things happened or there was something traumatic happening that can change the atmosphere it's not necessarily that it needs cleansed but it's disrupted do you understand yeah well Is everybody it's okay with that like if you were going to a Trump rally what? So like if you're going to a Trump rally? Yeah, if, wherever it is that you feel like you need. Uh, there's also atmospheres that are out of phase. Does anybody understand what that means, out of phase? That's what they told me in a boy. What do you mean by out of phase? They, they're not quite, they're like inside of some buildings is so different from the outside it seems like they're a t another dimension almost. So when like, they're out of phase. Kind of huh? Like having ghosts, like spirits around. Oh. It changes like, uh, the, maybe. You know, like it feels dense or it feels like uncomfortable yeah. or scary. Or it's, but it doesn't feel dirty or negative. It just feels different. Hmm. Do you I know what I mean? It no, just feels uncomfortable. It just well, goes out of phase. Except when I get lots of energy pouring in my head is the only time I can think about, like, that I can think of. Okay. Because so, and, but out of phase means it's not quite right with the rest of 
the atmosphere. You like you go from outside to inside, and it's like, whoa, this is not quite right. But it's not negative necessarily. It's just out of balance with the rest of the atmospheres. They they just they gave me a couple examples in my head of yes. You walk in and you just don't feel quite right. It's not a negative feeling. It's just like a strange feeling, maybe. Just I, something not quite right. Right. I have an example. I was in yes. Ireland when this happened. We went to a monastery. And um, at, at one point, the atmosphere felt like one thing, like a regular outside at a monastery. And then we went by this tree, and it the atmosphere completely changed. Everything became quiet. Everything just, it was very strange, but it wasn't negative. It was just that maybe something happened. Somebody created a portal right there, and it was an entirely new uh, space outside. Okay. And the reason to put that back in balance is because it's really not healthy to have it be out of phase like that. Oh, I wasn't so, aware of that, but I did. The board, 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 that's one thing, but if it's affecting the whole atmosphere, it needs to be put back to normal. I see. So. Okay. And that's one use for it is to put the atmosphere back to normal because it needs. it's not really healthy for you to to live in a, an atmosphere that's not right, you know, it's out of balance. Mm -hmm. So that's one, that's a sort of abstract one, but this is what they told me about this. Now the other one, the other side of it is much more, to me, was much more easy to understand, was the clearing, the, clear, the cleansing of the atmosphere. So, you start here, this is the left side, and you make your line, right? And then you go around from the outside till you hit the center. And then you go left again. Oh no, right again, I'm sorry. Right is the second one. Atmospheric cleansing is right. So you go start here. Go right, go around, and go right again. From the middle, right? Yep, right from the middle. Okay. Wait, so... This is an atmospheric cleanse. This is actually when you do feel something negative or something menacing in the room or the at or the whatever atmosphere you're in, you're going to... That is a, a room cleanser. And once again, as you feel necessary. Could you do it one more time, Jim, please? Sure. You start here. You go right. You make this line, this middle line here. Then you go around. You stop here and go right again. Did you get so that? So you go from, yeah, the second time you draw the straight line, you go from the center, not the back? Yeah, right. The, like you start over here uh -huh. at the left and go right mm -hmm. to make this line in the middle. And then you start here and go around to the middle and then go out. Okay. So you go you leave from the middle and go back out? Yes, you oh. leave, you go from the middle. Well, no, you go from here to and the middle. You start at the left left. Yes. And then watch my hands and see if I'm doing this right. Okay, so if yep. I go left and then I go like this, do I leave from the middle part out or do I come back to the left left? No. You you when you get to the middle, you go right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. When you get to the middle, go right. So you're doing that line twice, basically. You're starting here and doing it to there, this line here to here. Then you're going around, and you're doubling the line from here out. 
Okay, so you're only doubling half of the line technically, right? Correct. Okay. But it's, it's that's the room clearing is to the to the 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 right. Does that does that half double line is that as well for all the other ones? I'm a little confused because I was a, I was understanding that we were doubling the line for the other three, the whole line. Is that wrong? Well, yeah, you're no. double. You're this line's one and it just doubles from here. So, so for the other ones, it only doubles from the center. Yeah, because these are the lower chakras, and usually sure. negative come negativity comes from the lower chakras. Uh huh. These, but of course the heart is the middle. Sure. Uh, so, so you're cleansing that out from there. So you're not cleansing anything real positive. I see. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I should explain that. <laughs> it just these are a little confusing to me to teach. <laughs> All right, man. But did everybody write down what it what it, it is so that whatever you do it, you might have a guide. Because in my head, I need I have to look at this page before I can do it sometimes. It's not committed to full memory yet. They just taught me. They taught me it, but I had learned it a little bit wrong, so I had to relearn it. So that's my problem. Does anybody need any clarification on that? This is um, being taped, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, we're live. Yes. Is everything... Can I move it to the next symbol? Yes, please. The rest of it's going to be attunements after this symbol. Oops. Do you know how long it took me to write that tinch che that, that I was happy with? About a hundred times. It just would not come out looking right. This is called the Rook. It's for negative energy blocking. And let me tell you what that means. Can you spell it? It means that if you feel negative energy coming out of your client when you start working with them, you can do the Rook. And let me demonstrate that. It's over the body, right in the... It starts... Oh, uh, well, let's see. Yes. Over here. See, this is number one. I have it numbered. You go, do, do, and then you go, do, do, and then you go, do, 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 do. And this blocks out the negative energy coming to you from anybody. Do you need me to do that again? I did number it so it would be yes, easy. Please. I can't see the numbers, like they're blurry. Yes, please, Jim, can you do it again after? Oh, sure. Hold on. I'll do it. Oh. I wish that I had a place to put this so that I could point to it, but um, let me do it in the, I'll do it. It's from, can you see the paper? Yeah, pull it up some. Thank you. How's that? Yeah. Is that good? Yes. Yeah. The first two it. lines are one, two, three, four. Okay. Five, six, mm -hmm. seven. I'm sorry. Seven, eight. It's actually really simple. It looks more complex than it is. This one was really easy for me to learn because it's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. But what it does, it creates a block. It blocks negativity from coming out of the person so that you can deal with, uh, so that you're not harmed. Now, after that, there are other things. Oops, I'm sorry. Can you see it? You need to come back a little bit. Is that good? Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, that looks good right there. 
So if you really try it, it's very easy. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it, what it does is create a big diamond looking kind of, of structure which is blocking out all the things that are coming out of them if they are that negative. This is very, very helpful because some people that are doubters and disbelievers in healing methods and, and things of that nature but still get on the table for some reason have they are they will send you out negative energy and this will stop it and it will just sort of nullify it so that you can do your healing so as if they have any more negative energy it's just it's not going to come to you it's just bypassing you somehow but this blocks anything coming to you that's negative from within the person. It could also be blocking disease too. If there's something that you think is contagious, you can do this and block that as well. Any questions? Do you have to use a, a chokure to put the energy there to put that rock in or not so much no the rock the rock the rock works on its own but you know choku ray can't help after you're done doing it okay they all work independently but they can work together as well right right excellent thank you so yeah don't be afraid if you think another symbol is good along with it then you go ahead and do that that's fine. All right, does everybody got that? Do you know the origin of this symbol? Huh? The what, what's gave, the origin? Uh, I'm not sure what uh, alien species has this, but Takur gave me this symbol while I was working on a client, and I had to go write it down right away. OK. okay. So we can ask her. I didn't ask you. I didn't ask her at the time because I was doing, um, I was doing um, Reiki on somebody, and so it was like uh, I really couldn't stop and ask all the different questions I wanted to. But but she said, block the negative energy. Do this, and so I did it. All right. Any more questions? General questions, questions on the symbols, whatever. I'm good here. Okay. Anybody else? If we're all good, then we can start the attunements. Is Max here? No. No, so. no Max, Max all right. parted. All righty. It is almost three. Good. We have a whole hour to do attunements. And there's three different ones, so you're going to probably need the whole hour because they're individualized. So I have to go through every person, and then Takur has to go through everybody. Because, okay, first of all, there's this the Asui Master attunement. The Asui Master for all the different things that you learn from a, the Asui Reiki. So there, that is one attunement. The second will be a galactic Reiki attunement for all the symbols, except for the Tinch Che, which has its own attunement, which will be the third attunement. So there's a lot of attunements. Um, so we need to get started on them. Is there any questions about that? No, start where you will, Jim. All right. What I will do for the... Uh, can we take a short break for like a couple minutes, about five minutes, so I can get refreshed and everything? Sure. Yeah. And uh, then we'll start the attunements. Or do you want to meet back at the top of the hour and start at the top? Yes. Give it seven minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right.
it's a it's been a while since I've done my Reiki three attunements on people. I haven't had much practice, but I know basically what to do. So I have my little book as a cheat sheet. All right. I'm sure it'll be fine. Well, I want to make sure that you get the attunements the way they're supposed to be. So, um, After the attunements and before Takur leaves, I, I need to ask Takur something for the group. Would that be all right, you think? Okay. All right, yes, thanks. that's fine. I'm going to do the Asui attunements. Then Takur will come and do the rest. Okay. Perfect. But I'll do mine first and get that out of the way. The the regular Asui attunements, she doesn't have to do. I can do those. So, uh, and then after that, she can do the galactic attunements. And then she can do the Tins Che in, according to Octorian tradition. Excellent. Do we get a tune for rock also, or no? You know, uh, when you get the galactic attunement, you'll get that. The rock is going to be part of the galactic attunement. The tinch che has to be separate, but the rock can be part of that, the uh, galactic attunement. According to, I asked her the same thing. Where's my attunement for rock? She said, no, it's just part of the galactic attunement. So I said, okay. So does the galactic attunement attune us for other things that we're unaware of also? Well, it's, it's good for the uh, deep healing ch choku ray, the long-lasting choku ray, um, the rock, and what other symbol did I teach you that was galactic? Oh, the Hegesen breathing technique. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's it. I don't know if I taught you any other symbols. Those are all the galactic ones. There's a ton more galactic ones, but they're, it's too overwhelming to teach a lot of symbols. She, she said when she does just galactic Reiki, then she will teach a couple other symbols other than the ones that I showed you today. So there's one for bringing thought processes into line and one for different things. I, I can't even remember them all. But I told uh, Guru Dan about some of them. He was going, ooh. <laughs> there's one for, what was it, mental uh, bringing thought processes, changing synapse or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll how that would that. be used. She hasn't really explained it. Simon me. temporarily. Here he is back. All right. What? Simon's back. Hi, Simon. Hey, man. Sorry about that. That's no problem. Now we know your cam works because we'll be needing the cams for the attunements when it's our turn. Yes, Jim? Uh, yes, I believe so. At least, well, I I won't need the cams for mine. I don't know if she'll need because I'll I will be just in thought process being there. You see, for the attunements, let me explain the Asui one. The Asui one is I start in your back and I put my hands on your shoulders, but I am not there in real life, so you're going to have to imagine me putting my hands on your shoulders. And um, I, I do an, uh, part of the, the symbols back there on your, on your back and on the top of your head and um, then I come to your front and put the symbols in your hands then I go in the back and do something else and then I come back to the front and that it's it's like back and forth with the uh, with the attunement because there's different parts of it so and but you will have you will be instructed to do certain things during that period of time like um, for the Asui attunement, you have to hand, have your hands in the prayer position. And when I'm behind you, there will be a time when I say to lift your hands above your head. And then I will symbolically be holding your hands and putting the symbols into your head. And then I will come around to the front and uh, you'll 
you, your hands will be back down. I will put, put your hands back down. And then your hands will be opened. And that is when I'll put all the Reiki symbols into your hands. And then we'll do that. And then you can close your hands once again and put them in the prayer position. So just things like that. I will instruct you what to do at the what time. Perfect. That was a great uh, explanation so everybody knows what to expect. Don't and there will be times when I will be blowing on your head and blowing in your hands. You I think you've read about the violet breath. That's the violet breath and I have to be there it's not so much for me to not so much for you to be in any position except for when I'm in front of you. You have to have uh, your hands cupped like this for the violet breath also. But, um, but I have to be doing certain things as the teacher in myself to give the violet breath to you properly. Does that make sense to you? So, like, I have to... Uh, put my tongue on the roof of my mouth and clench my butt and do certain things and there's reasons for, for that so and you don't I don't in fact the whole the whole time I'm doing the attunements I have to have a, a certain pressure on my anatomies in some places so that's, a, that's something you'll learn as teachers okay. did you learn that yeah. uh, Michelle well, our te my teacher said that holy fire wiped the violet breath out. Like okay, because this is a suey. Right. So I did a suey holy fire. So it, I I I'm also in a suey teacher, but and so is Max. But we decided to do. I mean, I'm also a holy fire. Right. But no, no I did. The galactic I was didn't. part of this. We decided to do the suey because then that would give uh, to her more freedom for her stuff and right. stuff like that. So, Because yeah, she is different. based in the Dewey also in some ways. It's, yeah. it's complicated. So, but, yeah, I heard about yes, the I'm also, breath in, uh, my, in great detail, and she was like... Yes. She said it's <laughs> but that's for, the, that's for the teachers and... The, to put into the student. And you know what? I like the idea of the violet breath because it is a beautiful thing. So, and, But you're right. He with said holy the fire, there is no violet breath. And also, with uh, holy fire, your uh, spirit guides take a vacation as well. Yep. Now we're ready whenever you are, Jim. Okay. All right. Everyone put, must put their hands in the prayer position and close their eyes. And um, I will go down one by one. And uh, actually, what I'll do is I'll do all one side of everybody first. And then I'll go in front and do all the front side of everybody. And then I'll go in the back and do all the back side again. And then I'll come back in the front and do all the back side. So I'll just say your name as I'm doing as I'm putting my hands on your shoulders, all right? And so you'll know that you are getting your the attunement for this part. This is the, because it's in four parts. So I'll do everybody's back, everybody's front. Everybody's back, everybody's front. All right? All righty then, let's start. Hands, hands in prayer positions, eyes closed, feet flat on the floor, Prayerful position. Uh, just take a couple really deep cleansing breaths. And I, I must actually, uh, I'm in a position where I can just get to all of you. I'm going to start with Katie. One moment. Let me get it to, uh, into the spirit of it. I'm now putting my hands on your shoulders, Katie. There'll be a lot of silence because I'm drawing symbols 
on your back. I'm blowing the violet breath into your head and I will do more symbols as well. You know, I'm so happy. I love Reiki. <laughs> I really do. Feels just as good for me as it does whoever's getting it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And that's why I wanted to learn it, really, is so I could just work on myself. Like that. I mean, that's what started it all. When I under when I was told everyone is a healer, I was like, "What? I can do this also? This magic you call Reiki?" <laughs> okay, it's official. Jim is not able to salvage his connection or his power issue. We are going to absolutely have to reschedule. So I'm going to go off live right now. <laughs>